Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to learn how to set up the commitment phase structure. This video is a direct continuation of the series on breaking down circular references in project finance, where I introduced the key structures that lead to circular references. Expanding on this series, we're going to explore how to model the commitment fee, how to dissect its main components, and understand the source of the circular reference and how to manage it in a similar way as we did for the interest during construction structure. If you are eager to learn everything about circular references, I would recommend you to watch the series from the beginning. If you have done it already, you can start from here. That's going to get it started. But before I start modeling the commitment fee, let me tell you that you can get this file that I have right here by clicking on the link below. This is the file that I produced during the series Breaking Down Circular References in Product Finance. And you can download the free version that contains the basic structure that you can use for yourself to build on your own everything when you watch the series, or the paid version that contains the start and end versions of each one of the videos. Now, let's gonna get it started. All right, no more talk. Let's see how to set up the commitment fee structure. But first, what is the commitment fee? The commitment fee, in a way, it is the opposite of what the IDC is. And if you recall, the IDC is the interest you're gonna pay during your construction phase based on the open balance of your debt. Actually, there is two ways we can do it. The, the way we're doing right here is based on the open debt. But you recall from the first video that you could also use the average of the open and closed balance. That would be the second way to do it. But when you do it, the circular reference is going to pop up in your Excel file because there's a circular reference. So we discussed this before and said that for the interest during construction, banks would accept that you calculate it based on the open balance because that doesn't generate any sort of circular reference. For the commitment fee, it is the same way. You can either calculate it based on the open balance or you can calculate as the average. So let's gonna build it here so you can see how that works and what's the minimal difference between the two is. I'm gonna just copy below. Let me gonna move down here. I'm gonna press Ctrl plus. I'm gonna change here for the um, this bursted value account, right? So let's burst that, let's call that that account. Cool. So we're gonna have an open and this bursted balance. We're gonna have a close. So the structure is the same. I am going to do one thing here. I think have to let's do this is the open and burst balance. It's gonna be equal to the close balance of the previous period. But here on the day before the construction start with the which is the 31st of December, this number here should be equal to our that amount right here because that's how much we have undispersed on the day before and we're going to set this as a formula in sheet right so that's what we're going to have right here and as a drawdown we have just to move the cell to the formula to this reference just have to reference the cell where we have our drawdowns which is on row 31 i'm going to press enter but actually we have to have a negative number here I'm going to copy and paste because what we want to know is like how much is it still unsburst and should be zero by the end of the construction phase. And why is that? Because the way we set up our debt scoped in and our DSCR and our, our macros in the model is that we're going to size the debt and the equity according to our total capital needs or the total project costs as we have right here on row 29. We have to fix this. So that's how we're going to set up the account for the undisbursed debt amount. Very nice. So we have done it and we have now to only calculate how much fee or what's going to be our commitment fee. So we have to change here to, to commitment fee for each one of the periods during the construction phase, right? So let's gonna do it right now. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna say that our fee is going to be equal to the, I'm, I'm gonna change one more thing that I forgot here. So here we copy this, this from the structure for the IDC. But for the commitment, if you're going to have a lower uh, interest, let's say it's going to be 2%, and the interest per period is going to be 0.5%, right? So that's what's going to be our interest. We're going to pay our, our fee, actually, right? So let's going to calculate it. 
Remember from IDC, there's two ways you can do it. We can base the face on the open balance, which is going to be equals this number. I'm going to anchor times this number. I'm going to paste across, but we can also do with the average. But I'm going to do with the average a little bit later. What are we, what do you have to do now? We have to bring this phase or the cost of the phase to the total product cost. Because remember, the assumption is that we're going to finance, we're going to size the debt and the equity for the project based on all the costs. And because the project does not generate any source of revenue during the construction phase, we have to account for the cost of this phase as part of our total project cost. So that's what we're going to do by adding a row here. I'm going to call commitment, commitment fee. I'm going to press Ctrl D to copy the, the value above. I'm going to press Alt 3 here because that basically deletes, deletes or clean up all the formatting. And I'm going to press Ctrl D here so I have the formula summing everything that goes into the calculation section of our model. Very nice. So now we just have to say that our commitment fee is going to be equals to cell K47. Nice. I'm going to copy and paste across. So in principle, if you were to calculate your commitment fee based on the open balance, that would be finished and be, you would be ready to go. Then you just come over here, run the macro, and you're going to resize again your debt and equity because you added forty-eight or $49,000 extra to the total project needs or to the total project cost needs, right? So that's why we have to rerun our macro so that you can bring the master difference to zero and we're going to be sure that we have sized everything correctly. But what I want to do here, I want to really calculate the commitment fee as the average of the open and closed balance. And the reason being because then you can see how I would go about to adding this extra circular reference to our existing model. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna say that's gonna be equal to the average because we need to calculate based, we need to calculate our commitment fee based on the average of the open and closed balance. Okay, and when I press enter, we're gonna have a circular reference, right? So, and you can see how the circular, let me just copy before. So we can see how the circular reference goes. So if you press F2 here, we're going to go to this cell. Then we're going to go to this one here, which goes here, 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 which goes down here. So we just keep going the cycle. And that's how the circular reference is set up in this particular model. Very nice. So how do we go about to get rid of the circular reference? So the first thing we need to do is to break it, right? So we're going to break it right here. I'm going to delete everything. And if you recall, the way we first did it, uh, the way the we first fixed our model without the circular reference in a manual way was just by copy and paste. So again, if you don't remember this, I would recommend you to go back to the series and watch the first video on IDC and you can see how we set up the interest in construction, how we set up all the macros and how we did it in several different ways. Very nice. So let me do one thing. So I'm going to just add in here because we're going to need this. I'm going to move this one down. I'm going to calculate here the commitment difference, right? And I'm going to say, I'm going to copy from the above. This is going to be equals to the difference between this number minus this number on cell. Okay. So we need to bring this number here to zero. And by doing this in a manual way, we're going to just copy above here and we're going to paste values out ESV enter. So the difference has reduced to 257. I'm going to keep pressing F4 and I'm going to see how this number here is going to go to zero as we keep pasting the numbers on cell 28, right? So we have the zero here and we got there. But now we no longer have zero here. So we have to rerun the two other macros that runs in this master macro, which is the DSCR and the that size, right? So let's going to do this right now. I'm going to press OK. But now here is no longer zero, so we have to paste the numbers in here. I'm going to press Alt ESV again because I can see I still have the cop cells on the range I need. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to press F4 until we go to zero. We got there, but then we have no longer have zero here. We have to repeat the cycle until everything goes to zero, right? So I'm going to do it pretty quickly so you can see how that goes, right? So I'm going to rerun the macro here, and then we have zero in the two difference we are calculating right now. That's the manual way to do it. Instead of calculating these in a manual way where you copy and paste things across, I was going to add this to the macros we already built. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to set this as a macro style. 
I just have to set this at comma zero again. Very nice. And I'm going to name this range by pressing Alt F3. I'm going to name it as a commitment paste. So that's where I'm going to paste. And below here, I have to name this range here as, sorry, Alt F3 as a commitment copy. We're copying here and I'm going to paste there. And I also have to name this cell here as a commitment difference. Very good. So let me copy this because I'm going to need it. Now we're going to go to our developer tabs, Visual Basic, and we're going to see here we have all the macros that we built on our series already. Right. So that's what we have. And I'm going to add one more series. So I'm going to copy the DSRA macro because that's already the same kind of macro we're going to build right now. But we're going to change the names. We need the same structure here. So it's going to be commitment macro. Very nice. But instead of the SRA, we're going to have here the commitment difference. So we're going to loop it until the difference is lower or equals to 0 0.1. And what are we going to copy and paste? We're going to copy the commitment cop range and we're going to make it equals to the commitment, commitment base range. Uh, I hope I spelled everything correctly. Let me let me just reduce here. Cool. I'm going to delete here. And what I'm going to do now, I'm, good, I'm just going to run. Let me just make it a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. So I'm just going to run this macro. So you should see the numbers popping up in here, paste, being pasted in here. I'm going to press F8 so you can do it step by step. Okay, very good. So yeah, our macro is look is working correctly. Very good. I'm going to run once again and we go to the end sub and we achieved zero. Very nice. The next step we need to do now is to add this macro to the master macro. And if you recall from the previous video, we have our master macro right here. And the only thing we need to do is just to call it. So we're going to say call commitment macro. Very nice. And we just need to do one more thing because I think I forgot about that is to add the sum that this sum here, which is our master difference, which is this range here that we're aiming to get to a number that is lower than 0 0.1. So for this, we need to add the three cells above it on the commitment fee, on the DSIA, and on the that to equity ratio. So that's what we have to do. And we have it right here. So I'm going to run the macro and everything should be calculated correctly as it did. So that's going to change some assumptions so you can see how everything can change and how the three marks are going to work properly. So everything now is out of sync. So we have to run the macro again. We're going to run the master macro. We're going to press run macro. And there we go. So the whole model should be working correctly. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the video, learned something from today. And please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.